Okay, we're going to learn 15.5, Angle Relationships in Circles. The learning target is that you could apply chord, secant, and tangent angle relationships in circles. So I will tell you there are a good number of little theorems in here, but no worries, I'll help you, you know, with a way to remember them, okay? All right, here's the first one. And it says that whenever you have two chords, so these are the two chords here. So whenever you have two chords that intersect, they create, you know, some angles. And they actually intercept, you know, the arcs. So these are the intercepted arcs, this arc here and this arc here. So it turns out that these little angles here, uh, each one of them, is equal to one half of the sum of these two arcs. So what you do is you take these two arcs, you add them together, and then you divide by two, and that'll get you the measure of this angle here, and of course this angle here. They're vertical angles, so they're equal to the same amount. Okay, so that's that first one. That's the relationship between the, the arcs and the chords. Okay, then sometimes you'll have an angle that's outside the circle, and whenever it's outside the circle like this, like that circumscribed angle that we talked about, so what you do here, if you want to find the measure of the angle one, is you take this outside arc and you subtract the inside arc, and then you divide it by two, and that will get you the angle measure. All right, so let's actually find something here. So these two arcs, you can see, these are the arcs on the outside. So all we have to do is just add them together. So we're gonna do 46 plus 90, then we're going to have to divide that by two, and that's what X would be. So I'll just do that. So that would be what, 136, 136 divided by two, that equals X. So x equals, and then that's 136 divided by 2, which is 68. So that's, this angle here is 68 degrees, so it already has the degree thing, degree symbol there, so I'll just say x equals 68. All right, next one, really similar. So this time we have this arc, look at how this arc, it's the one that's intercepted here by the chords. And then this arc as well. So those are the two arcs that are relevant for this problem. So we're going to be able to add the, these two arcs together. And then we're going to divide it by 2, and it should equal 94. So we can set up a nice little equation. So we could say, all right, x plus 112. We would have to divide that by 2, and that equals 94. So then you just have to solve this little equation. So I would multiply by two on both sides. Of course, I ran out of room, booger. Twos cancel out. So then that would be x plus 112 equals, and then 94 divided by two, so that's 47. And then, of course, I messed it up. What did I do? Uh, what did I do? I Oh, I don't know how to multiply, sorry. That's probably good if I make that mistake. So 94 times two is 188. So let's put that 188. I was gonna get a negative measure for X and that wouldn't be good. So 188 minus 112, it's okay to leave this mistake in here. You can see Mr. Ray's very human, okay. So X equals 76. All right, next. All right, this time you see we have a circumscribed angle here. It's outside of the circle, right? That's what a circumscribed angle is. So we're gonna take the outside arc here that's intercepted, and then we're gonna subtract the inner arc, that's this arc right here, and we're gonna have to divide it by two, and then it would equal 70. So let's do W minus 110. We're gonna have to divide that by two, and that equals 70. I didn't learn from the last one that I ran out of space, sorry about that. So then we're gonna multiply by two, multiply by two, 
and that'll cancel out. So then that'll be W minus 110 equals 140. And then you're going to add 110. So then X, not X, W would be equal to 250. And then just kind of look and see that that would make sense. So we take 250 minus 110, that's 140. 140 divided by two, that equals 70. So that seems to make sense based upon that theorem. All right, there's another theorem that involves, that involves tangent lines. So it says that if you ever have a tangent and a chord, so this is a tangent, touches the circle in one spot, and then we have a chord right here that creates this angle. So the, the relationship there is that this angle here is equal to one half, uh, whatever the intercepted arc is. So this is the intercepted arc. And so the angle measure is one half of whatever the arc is, okay? Same thing for this one. This, this is a chord and this is a tangent. So that angle that's created is right there and it's equal to one half of the intercepted arc. All right, and then basically this says the same thing. Okay, but just got some, got some numbers in there. So this one, uh, finding x, you can see that this is 35 degrees. And remember when we did inscribed angles and we said that the inscribed angle is one half of the arc that it intercepts. So that means if that's 35, then the intercepted arc would be twice that. So that means that arc would be 70 degrees. And then this, this angle X, is, is the angle that we were just looking at before, that relationship of a chord and a tangent. So that means the X measure, that angle right there, would be half of the, the arc that it intercepts. So X would be 35 degrees. So that's why we have that our X is 35, because the, the measure of the angle is 35 degrees. And then what we can do is we can figure out, we can figure out what Y is by by first figuring out what this arc is and the way that we can find that is notice that this chord is going right through the center of the circle so that means that's 180 so all the way you know if we go from i know it's getting to be a mess but um, if you go from here all the way around that's 180 degrees so if that's 180 and then we subtract this little arc here that's 70, then that would be 110. So that means this part here is 110 degrees. And remember the Y here is an inscribed angle. So it's one half, it's one half of the, the arc that it intercepts. So that means it would be 55. So hopefully you can figure that one out. All right, so here's some other theorems relating, you know, to angles and tangents and secants. So all of these have an angle you can see that's outside of the circle. That's why every single one of them has a difference. They're all just differences. So remember that. So whenever it's outside of the circle, it's going to be a difference. And what we have here is we have a secant. A secant is just when you have a ray or a line that goes through the circle and it touches it in two spots. So it's different than a tangent that touches it in one spot. So this one is a secant and a tangent. This one here, there are two tangents, right? So that's the two tangents one. So the first one is a tangent and a secant. The second one is two tangents. And then the third one are two secants. See how it touches, goes through tw twice or touches the circle in two spots. Each of them is the same really re same relationship, really. You just take the outside arc, you subtract the inside arc, and then divide it by two, and that's what'll get you that angle measure. Okay, same for all of them. So take the outside arc, you subtract the inside arc, divide it by two, that's what'll get you that measure. Outside arc, 
minus the inside arc, their intercepted arc, and then divide by 2 gets you that angle measure. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. All right, so let's start finding some values. Okay, notice that this angle is outside of the circle, so that means we're going to be subtracting. So we're going to do this outside arc minus the inside one, and then we're going to have to divide by 2, and that equals this you know, outside angle here. So we're going to do, let's do, let's set it up. So we're going to do 83 minus x. We're going to have to divide by 2, and then that equals the circumscribed angle there. So 25 degrees. So then let's multiply by 2. So multiply by 2. So that would be 83 minus x equals, that would be 50. And then I'll say minus x equals, and then I'll do uh, 50 minus 83, and that's going to be negative 33. So then, of course, you know, two negatives. So we would multiply both sides by negative 1, and that would give us x equals 33. All right. And then just kind of mentally check it, you know, if that really is 33, then... 83 minus 33, that's 50, and 50 divided by 2, that equals 25, so that makes sense. So kind of get used to the, the theorems there, the relationships. All right, so this one, find the value of the variable. So let's, uh, okay, so if you look at this circumscribed angle here, it intercepts the circle at these two spots. So this is the arc, the outside arc. And then there's an inner arc that's created. It's right, it's right here, and it's labeled as y degrees. So those are the two that are involved. Let me do the outer one again. So this is the outer one. You know, it's created from this angle. It's intercepting the circle. So those are the two arcs. So this one here, you can tell, is 180, 180 degrees. And the only reason why we know that is because this has a chord that's going right through the center of the circle, so we know that that's the diameter of the circle. So we can set up a nice little equation. So we can say 180 minus y, and then we divide by 2, and then that equals 46. So then we can multiply by 2 on both sides. And so that will get us 180 minus y equals, and that should be what, 92. And then we can, I'll do it a little differently this time. This time I'll add the y over. So add the y over and then subtract 92. So 180 minus 92, so 88. All right. So here's the, the tip that I think helps a lot for these. So if the vertex of the angle is inside the circle, then you know you're going to just add the arcs and divide by 2. So, and then if the vertex of the angle is on the circle, we're just going to divide the intercepted arc by 2. And if the vertex of the angle is outside the circle, we're going to subtract the arcs and divide by 2. So just remember, inside we add. When it's on the circle, we just simply divide the one intercepted arc by 2. And if it's outside the circle, we subtract. So I think that is doable to remember those. All right, let's apply it to these couple last problems. OK, where's the vertex of the angle? Well, the vertex of the angle is on the circle. So that means we just need to figure out, we just need to to use the intercepted arc and divide it by 2. Well, to find the intercepted arc, we can say, hey, the whole thing is 360. So we can just do 360 minus the 220. So that would leave us with 140 degrees. So that means this arc, I'll make it blue as well. So this arc is 140 degrees. And that means that you know the vertex, again, is right on the circle. 
So that means this is just going to be one half of the intercepted arc. So that means that x would be 70. Okay, where is this where is this uh, vertex of the angle? So this vertex of the angle is also on it's also on the circle. So it's just going to be one half of the arc that it's intercepting. See how it's intercepting this whole arc right here? Well, we can also tell that it's going through half the circle. So that's 180 degrees. So we can actually understand that two ways. One is that it would be one half of this, so it'd be 90 degrees. And also the fact that this would be a radius. And so then remember we learned that when we have a line that's tangent to a circle and we have a right at the radius, uh, that it creates a 90 degree angle. So either way, x definitely equals 90. Then the other one is kind of a review because if this is an inscribed angle, see how the vertex is right here on the, the you know the, the on the circle, then this is called an inscribed angle, and that means this arc is twice whatever that inscribed angle is. So that would be seventy. So y would equal seventy. All right, and this might be near the last one. All right. So the whole circle, of course, is 360 degrees all the way around. So that means we could do 360 minus 240. So that would give us 120 degrees, right? Then we could say, hey, what's x? x is the central angle. And remember, the central angle is exactly, it's equal to the arc. The, you know, the arc that goes with the central angle. So x is equal to 120. And then, what's the other one? Uh, this one, remember the relationship there. If you know what this angle is and this angle, they are, uh, well, two ways to do this one. Let's do this one by, let's do it by the theorem we just learned today, which is, this arc minus this arc divided by 2. So we would do 240 minus 120, and then we would divide that by 2. That's what we would get for the circumscribed angle. So 240 minus 120, so that would be uh, 100. Um, I don't need to put my degrees in there. Oops. So 240 minus. 120, so that is 120 divided by 2, so that's 60. So y equals 60. And then z, let's try to figure out what z is. So z is this angle here, and it looks like z is intercepting. And I think I might just erase all of this, just so it doesn't look so messy. Let me erase a lot. So give me one sec. Okay, so z is right here, it's intercepting, I'm just extending this a little bit so you can see. So this arc right here, okay, and that arc we figured out was 120. So if that's 120, that means that z is half of that, so z is 60. All right. And then this is just a little preview of what next year's school pictures are going to look like. And this is most likely, you know, because the barbershops are closed. All right. Have a great day today.